Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be looking at this guy and the design iterations of this. So this is Don't Need Roads, my 150 gram drum spinning robot. So I've been working on this guy for a few months now and uh, fighting it every single month and going through and continuously iterating and improving the design. So I wanted to go through and talk about some of those changes with you. So obviously, first of all, this is a drum spinning robot, has a little brushless motor up the front here and a big 3D printed drum with teeth made out of pencil sharpener blades, uh, which we'll get to talking about in a little while. Uh, it also has aluminium tape and aluminium as armor. So there is some aluminium uh, epoxied in across the back and then when I have weight I also epoxy some down the sides but I also add this aluminium aluminium tape to it because it's nice abative armor so every time this stuff gets hit it just kind of like tears a chunk out of it and then I can just reapply this tape between matches if it needs it and then it will uh, be okay other than this one big glaring hole down the bottom here which I need to fix going into the next design of this thing uh, but first of all, we're going to start at the very beginning and talk about where this guy started and how this started. And when we go all the way back to that, we actually need to put this guy aside and talk about this thing instead. So my very first uh, robot, my very first combat robot was supposed to be a ring spinner. This is 6mm, I think, acrylic. And it was supposed to be a ring spinner spinning this 6mm acrylic. I got this um, robot up and running the very first fight that I ever did but the ring never span. The, the motors that I had just could not do that. And I then took it home, tried new designs. I tried about four designs in the month between the first fight and the second fight and was getting absolutely nowhere. So I need, knew I needed a new robot. So I got rid of the ring and I went on and decided to build a drum spinner based on Sergeant Cuddles uh, which is a Robert Cohen who put that up on YouTube. So I saw his video around this time and I designed this. So this is the first version of Don't Need Roads. Now it had a few issues with it, as you can see. Uh, so first of all, flat sides, it has a little skid at the bottom there to keep the drum up off the ground. The drum itself is once again 3D printed plastic, but this time around the um, drum was actually being held in place all the bearings were just little brass bushings that I found in my junk boxes around the place. So they didn't actually work all that well. There was little brass bushings and then a couple of tiny, tiny, tiny little screws that held everything in place in the front. So that's how all of my drums are mounted. They're mounted with two screws from both sides pressing in and then they have a motor out the back uh, which then runs everything. So this being my first attempt at a drum spinner, and also my first attempt at an actual spinning weapon, I used a very, very bad motor. So this is the first motor I ever used as a weapon motor. It is absolutely tiny. I'm not sure if that is gonna focus on that or not, but it is a tiny, tiny brushed motor out of a quadcopter. And as you can see, uh, by using this thing, I overheated it and it bent the plastic holding the gears together. So that didn't last very long. The drum spun for I think one fight and it kind of failed after that point. The other problem here too was that when I first designed this, I designed my motor mounts up and the width of the robot for the width of the motors plus the wheels that I was gonna use, but failed to account for the fact that the actual motors themselves had um, longer shafts than that. So I had to then end up <laughs> drilling and dremeling the sides of this thing out. So uh, on top of all of that too though, uh, this is PLA plastic, uh, not the same material that Sergeant Cuddles is made out of. Sergeant Cuddles, which is what this robot was designed from, uh, was designed using a high impact plastic that had to be machined rather than 3D printed. So uh, it was already kind of on the back foot, but at the same time, uh, Around this time was the very first time people started using spinning weapons in the league that I'm running. Uh, so this bot was relatively safe. It got a few nicks in the back corners and things, uh, but it actually survived pretty well. The only problem was uh, during that same meet, I saw somebody get stood up on their flat back edge and realized that that was going to be an issue. So I decided to change that going into version two. So if we have a look at version two, uh, version two was a little bit better. So. I added these extra sections around the edges 
so that the axles could still make it through. I also then left some holes just in case I'd underestimated that again. I then added a round section to the back so that it wouldn't stand on the back. It would just fall over uh, and be able to continue fighting. Uh, but this time round, the spinning weapons were bigger and faster. And as you can see, I got absolutely obliterated. There was so much force going through this robot uh, that it got it got pretty pretty destroyed. Uh, on in the actual positives, though, the motor upgrade. Uh, I moved from the tiny tiny little motor that had burnt out to this bigger motor, which is basically the same motor that runs uh, the drive, but rather than having an actual drive wheel on it or any gearbox or anything, it just had a little pulley, which then kind of sat in under here and ran the, um, the weapon off of a rubber band. So this is the weapon. The other good thing about this one is I improved the screws. So I took a flathead of countersunk screw heads and actually sharpened them a little bit, just, just a tiny bit with the Dremel, just so they got a little bit more bite than the, uh, the bubble head screws that we had in version one. These things really, really did not do anything when they hit someone. This guy actually held up pretty well though, on the whole, I was pretty happy with its performance uh, up until it got absolutely destroyed. Um, the, the drums kept spinning for the entire match, which was the first time I'd ever had a weapon actually survive a match, which was really, really cool. Um, but then obviously because that thing got really, really destroyed, it was time for a version three. So version three came along and it looked a little bit like this. So this guy had a few upgrades in this case, actually. Uh, so it was the first time I moved away from using brass bushings, because once again, these things aren't perfect. I finally had myself a few little uh, five mil bearings, and then I also had uh, some five mil bolts. So the bolts now go through the side into 5mm bearings. Uh, there's a bearing in the end of this guy, there we go. A little 5mm bearing in there. Um, it was also the first time I moved away from using screws and used uh, pencil sharpener blades instead. Now the problem with this was these ones here, the pencil sharpener screw was just going straight into the plastic and that really did not work so well. Uh, the first time I spun this up, it threw one of the pencil sharpener blades and cut through the cable tie holding the weapon motor in place. So that was a little bit scary and it meant that I had to, or at least I did, hot glue the edge of all of the blades for the remainder of the fight, which kind of sort of worked, but not really. There's a, um, a couple of blades missing here and that was all from each of those fights. Um, so I also improved the armament. So I thickened up where the actual drum mounts to. So there's a much thicker piece of plastic along the front. And then I added aluminium to the sides for the, and the back for the very first time. This stuff actually held up pretty well, uh, surprisingly enough. It's just, like I said, aluminium and epoxy. Uh, I also rounded the edges so that I couldn't stand sideways and I would always fall back on my wheels that way too. Um, so like I said, this it was a definite improvement, but it still, uh, still sustained some damage. The corners were an issue, especially through the middle. And then there was a few kind of nibbles out through the front here. Uh, but it went pretty well, and I think that was actually uh, one of the only versions of this robot that's actually placed uh, anywhere in a tournament, but it was still, still pretty cool. Um, so next up, I kind of decided to keep going with this idea. Uh, the big robot that I was up against was a big horizontal spinner, and it kept um, taking chunks out of me, and the rounded edges have this nice, like, flat section right across the apex of the, the roundness here, where a spinner can get hold of that and dig into it and do some serious damage. So I changed my mind up and added angular sides. So once again, it's still able to self right or at least flick itself back down onto its wheels. But at the same time, when it gets hit, the hits deflect off the actual metal. So there's some nice scarring in under here where the blade is hit and then bounce down towards the floor, which is absolutely perfect because it means 90% of the energy is in the other robot and not actually in my robot. And once again, there's some really nice scars on this thing where that blade has had a really good go at me, but because of the aluminium and the angle, it's kind of pushed it down and away. Uh, the only problem with this is the front edge here, as you can see, this had to be repaired time and time and time again because uh, it wasn't armored well enough. There was no angling up the front here. It was just um, thick plastic, and I was kind of hoping that that would hold up, but it 
really actually didn't. Uh, so that kind of got absolutely destroyed going through there. Um, so I also had to um, cut extra speed holes in the back here for the weight because at this time I was using this stuff, which is a conventional RC setup. So these are just uh, DC, uh, yeah, just conventional brushed ESCs. There's three of those there and there was also a receiver. Uh, and this stuff is quite heavy and a little bit overkill actually. These are 10 amp ESCs and I really, really didn't need to use them. So um, the other thing that happened on this one, of course, was that the weapon drum maintained the, uh, the pencil sharpener blade teeth, but this time I stuck um, some actual nuts in the back and you can see where one of those nuts has been pulled out through the plastic but they were captive knots in the back held in with epoxy and hot glue and they actually held up pretty well. The drum got a bit of a beating, but the blades held in there relatively well, which I was kind of happy about. Um, so the next iteration, I worked at trying to improve this front section. Now, I actually did manage to improve this front section somewhat. You can see I pulled this angle all the way forwards over the drum mounting point here. Uh, however, I learned a very valuable lesson that day. This is transparent PLA. Transparent PLA is so much more brittle than regular PLA. Regular PLA, like this stuff, is actually a lot less brittle. And yeah, the first couple of times I got hit here, I just got absolutely annihilated. I'll hopefully see if I can find some of that footage and throw it up right now for you because, yeah, that was, that was just... A, <laughs> a massive amount of destruction that happened to this robot. Uh, also around that time actually though I upgraded to the brushless motor and upgraded from, well I changed I guess I should say from the conventional um, RC car gear to an Arduino setup which is what's currently sitting in the back of this robot here. So there's a little Arduino and a H-bridge down here and then there's a uh, 2.4 gigahertz transceiver module and a little 3.3 volt power supply for that module down here. I have an instructable on this stuff actually uh, on how to build this thing and how to get it all set up and I'll link that down in the description down below. But this thing is a lot lighter than the RC car gear and it gave me a bit of extra weight to play with and it also allowed me to add this little brushless motor in because uh, I was building a whole new system so I just added a brushless ESC rather than a brushed ESC. Um, but yeah, that was in this first robot, uh, well this robot here, and yeah, like I said, I was I was pretty confident going in because I thought for the first time I have a proper weapon motor and I had done some improvements with the Arduino stuff and I thought, oh this is going to be really good, and then the transparent PLA just shattered, shattered into millions of pieces, uh, which was really not good. The other thing that happened too is that the brushless motor slipped out of its original like T mount thing that it had with it. Uh, which really didn't help at all. Um, so going in through to the next iteration, so this is the, the iteration before the one that we're actually finally at now, I upgraded and changed the um, the mount for the brushless motor, so that now sits in here and I had two screws holding it in place, one at the top, one at the bottom. Uh, they didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped they would have worked, but they did, they did okay. I also actually moved the position of the wheels further back a little bit because I was having some drive issues uh, in the previous two versions and I thought it might be to do with the drive positioning, uh, so I moved those back. And also this is the first time I used aluminium uh, tape as this abative armor stuff and it worked pretty well the first time I used it actually. This, is, this first time is literally just this tape on top of plastic. There is no epoxy, there is no actual aluminium down there either. Um, I also thinned the walls out uh, going into this build so that I could have a little bit more, so I had a little bit more weight to play with because of course 150 grams is not a lot of weight um, and I was really starting to struggle for it. So I thinned the walls out and just kind of hoped that the armor, the extra armor that I was adding to the top and the bottom was really going to help out and in this case it, it survived. It did relatively well. Um, and its drum also was the first one that got a little bit of aluminium tape as armor as well. The only problem with this guy is I did have the captive knots in place, but the captive knots were held in with hot glue rather than held in with epoxy. 
and I lost a couple of them, causing me to lose a couple of blades, which really didn't help uh, when it came to the fighting. So this guy didn't didn't do too badly, but didn't do overly well either. And then, yeah, finally we get back to today, here and now. Uh, this is Don't Need Roads in its current form. Um, the drum is still pretty much the same. The drum is about 26 grams, I think, of 3D printed plastic, printed at about 40% infill, and then it has the pencil sharpener blades top and bottom, all, I guess, on the, the edges or as teeth there. Um, so designed to spin up at the front, I think I've put the, uh, the drum back in backwards here, unfortunately, so it's not actually working the way it should. Um, but as you can see, even in this case, these bolts and nuts were epoxied in place, and right here we have a little uh, bolt and nut trying to escape, and the blade from across the front here broke off. So, like I said, this is the, the final design, or the current design, for this little uh, little bot, but it is actually going to get an upgrade, and that's probably going to be a video in the coming weeks, because I have a design for a new weapon, which some of you might recognize as a beta bar, uh, so that is going to be remade. Uh, this is a, a plastic mock-up. I'm going to remake this out of uh, steel and add that across the front rather than the plastic weapon and uh, see what type of difference that can do because, of course, that I think is now finally the point that I'm up to. I need to start iterating the weapon. The weapon really hasn't had an integration iteration for a little while. We've been doing lots of I've been doing lots of work on the body shell um, and trying to get this thing up and running. And it's just I think it's finally the body shell is finally starting to get there. Other than this small amount of damage to the back corner, which I need to uh, change the design back there just so that there's nothing really to grab onto. But once I've done that, it should be okay. Um, I'm also going to upgrade my Arduino system. This is an old Arduino system. It's got a lot of wires and connections and stuff going everywhere. And one big hit, I think, uh, reset the Arduino or something. I think there's a, a broken wire in here somewhere because I had a, a very big hit in the last fight. Uh, and that seems to have kind of knocked the program out of the Arduino somehow. So this whole Arduino system is going to get a, a redo, an overhaul, um, and it is going to be smaller and probably not lighter, but definitely smaller and fit into the back of the bot a little bit easier. Also, the wheels are getting a bit of an upgrade. These wheels in here were a bit of an experiment. They are a TPU wheel, which is a kind of flexible rubberized filament. Um, and they didn't have a whole lot of grip, so they just had a bit of silicon applied around the edges just to give them some grip. Um, but the next version is going to be something like this. This one is printed in PLA, but I'm going to print a hub out of TPU, and then I'm going to have these rubber tires, which are off a, a little educational robot that I have sitting around. Those are going to go on as the actual wheels, and those should hold up a lot better and give me a little bit more grip than these guys. Uh, but there you go, so that is it, that is Don't Need Roads, my 150 gram drum spinner. Um, so look out for future videos on the channel where I go through and update this guy's design. Like I said, we're going over to the beta bar um, very soon, and then there's a fight at the end of this month where hopefully the beta bar will be in and working, and then we can have a chat at the end of this month as to how those changes went and how all of that worked. So there you go, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.